Welcome to the Edge Ice Arena in Bensonville, Illinois. Second semifinal matchup about to begin between Loyola Gold and St. Vider. This is the 2012 Blackhawk Cup Tournament, the Red Varsity Division. The winner of this game between St. Vider and Loyola will be playing the St. Rita Mustangs. St. Rita took down the number one team in state, the New Trier Green Trevians, earlier by a score of 3-2. to two. So St. Rita, who is ranked four in state, they get the first big, big upset of the tournament. And now we'll see the number two seed, St. Vider Lions, versus the number three seed, Loyola Gold Ramblers. St. Vider will be wearing their white jerseys, navy blue numbers, red trim. The Lions are led by head coach Chris Lappin, and they'll have in goal starting Rob Schmidt. On the Loyola side of things, they will be the visiting team, the lower-ranked seed, ranked third. They'll be wearing their gold jerseys, white numbers, maroon trim. They are led by the Hall of Famer, head coach DJ LeVar. And you just saw Coach uh, LeVar interviewed by Chet Kopik. Before the game started, you can find that interview on dailycopic.com along with other player and coach interviews. Dailycopic.com is your stop for prep hockey coverage. And well, Loyola will have in goal starting number 60, Jordy Risen. Risen had 23 saves and a quarterfinal shutout victory as the Ramblers took down Bennett Academy from the Chicago Catholic Hockey League. This will be the second opponent in a row they'll be taking on from the Catholic League. Now well, I'm joined alongside, sorry Mike, joined alongside Mike Romano, voice of the Chicago Steel of the USHL. He will be on the uh, color commentary tonight. And uh, just welcome to the Edge Ice Center. This place is buzzing right now. Trip to the United Center is on the line. Mike, your first impressions. Well, I, I, uh, the first game I predicted, boldly predicted, that the first team to score would win. Uh, I am going to stick to that with a slight modification. The first team that scores might win. <laughs> uh, this is going to no be another barn burner, a possible overtime game. I think there's not a lot to choose between these two teams as far as big differences. I think it's, it's going to come down to goaltending. The last game, I think Marty Napleton won a game for his team that uh, they, Saint made, Rita they might have lost. Yeah, the goaltender for St. Rita, they prevailed. Opening faceoff is controlled by St. Saint, uh, Saint Vider as they actually come away with it. That'll be Decker across the blue line, dumps it in. Risen Ryzen didn't know where it went and deflects off the corner and bounces oh. on Ryzen and in. St. Vider scores 12 oh. seconds into the game. Boy, shades of the last game, Matt. Wow. Wow. That oh. was a real soft goal. And Jordy Ryzen had no idea. Yeah, I don't think he knew where the puck that was. Puck took a weird hop from this corner on the near side. And just like that, St. Vider takes the lead. I believe they're going to give that to Decker. But that was a that was the weirdest goal I think I've ever seen. And I've seen some weird ones because I've let him in. So now Loyola finds themselves in a 1-0 hole. That's what, in the first minute? In the first 12 seconds. <laughs> and St. Vider with the lead. And now we have a penalty coming up. This has been the most eventful 21, uh, first 21 seconds of a game I can remember. Now, if your reason, what are you thinking right now? I mean, this is the, this is the biggest. Ryzen. Oh, I'm sorry, Ryzen. That's if right. you're Ryzen right now, what are you thinking? I mean, can you compartmentalize and, and put this aside? You have to, don't you? Yeah, he's just got to forget it. But we have a tripping call against Decker. So Decker, who just scored the goal, will go to the box. Two minutes for tripping. And Loyola will have a great opportunity on the power play. This is huge to for try them if they can bounce up. right back. Uh-oh, breakaway coming up. Rob Renner moving in, shoots. That goes over the net. Rising got a piece of it. And if you're rising, I, mean, you, I can imagine the thoughts going through your head. But right now, Lindsay turning right back around. It's upended at the blue line by number 42, Ray Seebeck. That was just a fluke goal. I think maybe he could shake that off. So this is the third time this season these two teams have met. St. Vider has beat Loyola in each of those two meetings. The last time they played was all the way back in November, and that was in the Loyola Gold Thanksgiving Tournament. That was a, a uh, they met in the semifinals. St. Vider was able to beat Loyola 3-2 in overtime. And, that, and the Lions 
tied the game late and won the game late. I believe it was uh, Santra Sola tied it and Robert Renner won it. And that shot goes wide for Loyola. 47 seconds remaining on the power play for the Ramblers as it's cleared by St. Vider. That goal, the reason let in was eerily similar to the one that opened up the last game. Horizon, I'm sorry, Horizon. I'll, I'll get that right. By the end of the game, Matt, I'll get it right. Or we'll just call him Reason. That's going to be his name. But that was a soft goal just as the first goal of the last game. Loyola on the attack. Shot goes just wide of the net. That was Willie Palavios. And just to make sure I'm an equal opportunity name butcher, I'll call him Talbo. <laughs> Talbo gave up the first goal of the other game. 14.46 left to play in the first period. Four seconds left on the power play as Vider gets it back. They go up ice to Campanelli. That missed him. It'll be an icing call against St. Vider. As uh, Decker left the penalty box, Obner hopped off the bench. As Decker went to the bench, we get a whistle. 14.36 remaining in period one. St. Vider was the only team, sorry, Mike. St. Vider was the only team in the quarterfinals that really had a, uh, a, lack of a better term, big victory or easier victory as they uh, they won their game 7-3. to three. It was a close one through one period. They were only up by a goal on Sandberg. And then in the second period, they exploded for three goals, yep. went up 5-1, yep. and that was That's Matt Gavula. And St. Vider now can add to their lead. 13-40 remaining in period one. Clearing attempt, Santos so lost his balance. Two on one now for the Ramblers. Shot save made by Schmidt. And now some pushing and shoving going on. That was number 25, Axel Liffendahl with the shot for Loyola. Two on one. He didn't make, try to make the pass there to Jack Hennessy. Schmidt, big goaltender. Yeah, and, and the key there was Schmidt absorbing that rebound, Matt. I mean, he hung on. If he didn't, there was a yellow... Sweater right there with him. Schmidt made 20 saves against the Sandberg Eagles in the quarterfinal victory for St. Vider. Lions will skate it out of their zone. 130 left on the power play. Dumped in by number 22, Jackson Owens. By the way, both goalies are right-handed, meaning they catch with their, their left hand. Puck fought for on the side. Hennessy trying to get there for Loyola. He's able to clear it for the Ramblers. And Schmidt will play it. He gives it to Santrasola. Santrasola up to Renner. Renner to Lindzig. Lindzig moving in. And he ran into the goal without the puck. <laughs> puck got stopped up in the crease. Ryzen got a piece of it. And Lindzig went crashing into the net. I kind of like that play there by St. Vider. That was quick up the ice. Little yep. touch pass by Renner. He didn't even move his skates at all. And Lindsay went on the rush and had the opportunity for the St. Vider Lions from Arlington Heights, Illinois. A couple of north side clubs hooking up. Loyola Academy located in Wilmette. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Loyola take a run at Schmidt because they've run at Ryzen. May see a little retaliation later on. That's very. It's uh. It's quite possible. 44 seconds left now. Cleared by number five, Nick Schaefer. Schmidt plays it. As now it's uh, the direction. It's uh, Gregory who changes directions. It will be played by O'Donnell. O'Donnell cross eyes for Campanelli. Campanelli across the blue line. Fired it towards the net. That went wide, but St. Viner was offside. 24 when, seconds remaining on the power play. 12-13 to play in the first. one nothing St. Vider. When you played for Mizzou, did you hear the crowd really? Uh, assuming there was one. Yeah, <laughs> assuming there was, there was one. No, the, the one time we had a really big crowd, we went down to Springfield, Missouri to play our rivals, Missouri State. And uh, it was a Jordan Park Ice Arena down there. They packed them in. They had about 1,200 fans on hand. And uh, those fans... Let themselves uh, let themselves be known. A lot of uh, college kids were uh, loud, and it was a, it was a real fun place to play. Especially most of us, considering most of our games didn't have too many uh, people in attendance. And Loyola now clears it. Three seconds left on the power play. Decker and the puck go over his blade. 
Penalty over now. Gavula out of the box, back to full strength. As it's hit hard by number 11, that was Keith. But it'll be played right back up, ice by Owens. Owens lost the puck in front, and it's hit away by Cal Callahan. 11.30 to play in period one. You're watching Playoff High School Hockey on HighSchoolCube.com. Happy St. Patrick's Day. And thank you, as always, for joining us for high school sports on HighSchoolCube.com. Pass up, ice goes to Novi. Novi against one man, tried pulling it to his uh, back to his forehand. Couldn't get past Decker, though. Decker is an all-state defenseman. And he will also... Uh, he was also named to the uh, CCHL All-Star team oh. as well as the Metro North All-Star team. Shot kicked away there by Schmidt. Keith, Two good saves by Schmidt, especially the one on the short side. Schmidt keeping this a 1-0 game. And now a turnaround shot by Connaughton. And that was knocked down. And Dice on the attack. Lost it along the blue line. Callahan with a wrister, top of the circle. That went right to the midsection of Schmidt. He makes the save. And we get a stoppage of play. 10.28 to play in period one. St. Vider leads at 1-0 after that uh, goal scored by Michael Decker. The 12 seconds into the game. That was just an innocent dump in. Took a funny bounce on the corner. Ended up deflecting right off the skate of Jordy Risen. I'm spending half of the time, instead of being your analyst, uh, telling people to sit down. <laughs> Tight quarters here at the Edge Ice Arena on the West Rink. Same rink that the uh, Chicago Steel play on. Formerly the uh, practice home uh, facility of the Chicago Blackhawks. In fact, the Steel will be playing right after this game. Puck in the neutral zone. Santrasola comes away with the turnover. As he passes to Kellner. Kellner gets stood up at the faceoff dot. Under 10 left to play in the first period. Puck bouncing down the ice, touched up by St. Vider. Looked like it was going to be icing, or if it had enough uh, muster to get down there, but it was bouncing. St. Vider on the breakout. That is number 26 going the other way. Vince Mastro Domenico, who on the dump in. Loyola trying to bounce it out. They do. Turnover by Gavula. That goes to on the stick of number 88, John Joyce. St. Vider has never won the state championship. They've been runner-up twice, though, once in 1979-1989 as well. Loyola, on the other hand, is no stranger to March or the championship game as they've made it to the championship game 12 times, but they've only brought home the title twice. That shot steered away by Ryzen. Those uh, two championships came back to back in the mid-90s, 1995 and 1996 for the Loyola Gold Ramblers. There's Renner at the half boards, backhands it towards the net, gloved down by Callahan. That was a really good defensive play to keep that out in front. And he gets the outlet pass on the right wing. Pass back intended for number eight, Pal uh, Polivos. He couldn't handle it though. Ramblers regroup in the neutral zone. Polivos gives chase on the left wing boards, Campanelli. Swatted at it, prevented him from getting it. Now the Vider Lions heading the other way. Pass goes to number 22, shoots and scores! Jackson Owens off the feed from Lindsay. And it is now a two to nothing lead for the St. Vider Lions. Well, that was a beautifully executed two-on-one, and we haven't really seen those well done in the last couple of days, Matt. But in this case, it was right on the tape, and all he had to do was just snap that thing past not Ryzen. Much, not much Ryzen could have done no, there. No, that was a very well executed two-on-one. And it's, you know, in this stage of a tournament, two goal leads are big. If your head coach Lappin... You couldn't have a better start here for his uh, St. Vider Lions team. Up by two goals midway through the first period. You can't fault Ryzen for that goal at all. Lindsay on the attack again. Big shot. Blocker save made by Ryzen. Rebound on the near side. Eight minutes to play now in the first. Loyola playing from behind. Something they're not, uh, they haven't been too familiar with in this tournament. 
Boy, Viator right now has got a lot of energy, and the momentum is fully in their favor. Verizon has picked up his game. He, if I may, Ryzen has risen <laughs> since that first soft goal. And that's going to be an icing call against Loyola. Now, St. Viator, tournament-tested team. They won the two big holiday tournaments in the Chicago area as they uh, won the Loyola Gold Thanksgiving tournament. As I mentioned, they beat Loyola in the semifinals of that tourney, and then they went on to beat their rivals from the Chicago Catholic Hockey League, the St. Rita Mustangs, in the championship. And then uh, the following month in December, St. Rita was able to win the 18th annual Holiday Classic Blackhawks Charities cha uh, Tournament. And in that, uh, in that tourney, they were able to beat CBC, who, is the, uh, who are the champions of uh, the state of Missouri, CBC from uh, the St. Louis area. So Vider had won two uh, tournaments earlier in the season, but, uh, you know, they really kind of struggled in their two leagues. They competed in the playoffs. They went one and three in the uh, Metro Cup, Scholastic Cup playdowns, and they uh, also were swept by Bennett in the Kennedy Cup playoffs. So uh, not as much success as they wanted to in league play, but right now they have a 2 nothing lead, 6.50 remaining in the first period. And uh, they are uh, looking like a team determined to make it to the United Center and meet up with the St. Rita Mustangs. I agree. Right now, Viator looks very, very imposing. Although the... The risen rising is a reason for Loyola to still have some optimism. I had, I really had to get that in there. 6-19 to play now. Schaefer up the left wing side. Gets it to Lavazario. He'll dump it in on the backhand. The St. Vider will get it out of the zone quickly if, if after Loyola went the for the goal, change. Bider, I think... That's going to be a real problem. That'll be, a, even though, I mean, still a ton of time yeah. left. The way Loyola's played so far, they're going to really have to kind of just settle down and uh, and try and reset their focus here as St. Vider has just come out. And they've, been the, they've played much harder. They've skated faster, and they just look like the more determined team that first on the ice. That goal also had to be deflating, Matt. It really had to be. At 12, I mean, 12 seconds in, most of the people hadn't even settled into their seats yet here at the uh, west rink of the Edge Ice Arena. Up ice pass goes off the skate of Lavazorio. Lavazorio chasing it down, and it's swatted away from him by Gregory. Campanelli what? now with it. He stick handles, shakes one man, and passes it through the middle. That goes in on Ryzen. It was intended for Renner, and that will uh, create a faceoff in the Loyola zone. 5-15 remaining in period one. 2 nothing's our score. St. Vider on top. One thing I've noticed is that Viator always has a couple men back. There have been very few odd man situations for Loyola. So Viator's is taking care of business in their own end and making it difficult for Loyola to, to get any kind of uh, attack going. And there's only one two-on-one -on -one I can think of that Loyola had, and Schmidt played that one perfectly. If you're not careful, you can make a two-on-one -on -one easy for a goalie. Giveaway on the side of the net there. Gregory had a great chance. Ended up throwing it through the blue paint. Now Gregory keeps it in. Pass across. Campanelli was there. Didn't uh, have his stick on the ice, though. Now we have a penalty coming up. Loyola touches up. This is going to be against the Lions. As now Gregory uh, looked like he got a stick on it. Didn't. And now it looks like it could be another call. As number 58, Novi, got hacked down. And so St. Viner will be going to the box. Just one, uh, one call will be made. It will be a slash. And that will be going on the home team. They're going to call Campanelli two minutes for slashing. And, Matt, when we look back to a few moments ago, all that started with somebody trying to clear it up the middle. And it was gloved by a, a defenseman and knocked, or forward knocked down. You cannot clear it up the middle. We've seen people be burned in uh, almost every game from that. Second power play opportunity for Loyola Gold. There's the Ramblers. Well, here's a case where we Played wish we were around sitting up higher. Side. <laughs> Puck fought for along the near side. As Loyola puts it towards the net, that hit off the side. 
Puck still on the near side. Schaefer stick handling. Goes up top. They'll pass it back to Schaefer. And Keefe had to go, had to his pass go past his man. Now Mastro Domenico rushing it up the right wing side. Shorthanded sh uh, chance. Shot is saved by Ryzen. Mastro Domenico taken to the boards. Hennessy with it along the near side. Had to shake off one check from Jackson Owens. Boy, when we, later on, we're going to remember that save because that would have been a shorthanded goal and a big dagger in the back of Loyola. Gold gets the puck back across the Viner blue line. And Decker can't clear and a shot on Schmidt. He makes the stop. And it looks like we're going to have some, uh, some more men going to the box. The official might be taking them both. Boy, Matt, that save before by Ryzen on a breakaway could be the biggest save of this game. It could have made it 3 to nothing in a back-breaking shorthander. So Ryzen hasn't given up in this game yet. And uh, I saw number 36 for Loyola, Tom Kennedy, go off uh, to the box. I did not catch the number of the St. Viator player, so it looks like it will be coincidentals there. 3.39 remaining in period number one. And on that save by Ryzen, he came out into the white ice to cut down the angle. He was able to do that because the defenseman was bearing down trying to cut off the shooter. And that helped Ryzen be able to have the confidence to go out and cut off the angle. So still five on four. Loyola still with the man advantage. 44 seconds left on the power play. Left point. Shot. Schmidt got a piece of that one. And as it came to the uh, near corner, now it gets deflected out of play. 35 seconds on the power play. 322 to play in period one. You're watching high school playoff hockey on highschoolcube.com. And for you fans, it might be new. We do not, there is no clearing and cleaning of the ice between the first and second period. We'll pretty much start up right away. Lindsay wins the draw and is able to clear it the length of the ice. St. Vider has done a great job on this penalty kill. And Lindsay, breaks up, yeah, <laughs> Lindsay breaks up that pass. Novi across the blue line lost it to Lindsay. Lindsay. With the uh, C on his jersey, also Robert uh, Schmidt, the goaltender, also has a C on his jersey. Nine ticks of the clock on the power play. Now a drop pass to Novi. His slapper was partially blocked. Kellner out. And now Lindsay on the uh, break. Gets it to Kellner. Kellner shoots. Save made by Ryzen. Puck free. It's hit back towards the front of the net. Boy, a little uh, bit the, too fancy of a play there, Matt. They didn't need to. It was a behind-the-back pass. You know. Kellner came off the off the bench because Campanelli went straight to the bench as the penalty expired. That play ended up being a three-on-one, but Ryzen comes up huge once again for his team and uh, keeps us a two-goal game with two and a half remaining in period one. Matt, they also didn't spread out. They kind of clustered together, and one defenseman was able to kind of hang kind of block things up for three guys. You don't want to do that. Puck cleared down the ice by Loyola. First one to get there was O'Donnell. He sends it the other way. Now Schaefer off the boards. That kicked off a skate. Puck held in by O'Donnell as Loyola tried clearing it through the middle. Well, how many times have we seen that, Matt? It doesn't end well often. No, now Gavula across the blue line. It'll be off sides. It's Hennessy. Looked like Hennessy kind of got bumped by a St. Viator player. Couldn't really control himself. But it's offsides nonetheless. 2.05 to play in period uh, number one. 2 nothing is our score. St. Viator on top. St. Viator, the yeah. higher ranked team, number two in state. Loyola Gold, number three. Winner will take on St. Rita on Friday night, March 23rd at the United Center almost, for the Red Varsity State Championship. You almost want to see a sign put up there, road closed, do not enter. In oh, the middle? The, uh, yeah, through the middle. <laughs> I'm sure the uh, head coaches would agree with you there. Play in the neutral zone. Loyola gets it across the blue line. Hennessy passes to Gavula. His wrist shot went wide to the left of the net. I think it was deflected slightly. Ramblers trying to get on the board. They've been held scoreless so far. 
And their game against Bennett in the quarterfinals, that was a grind. They only uh, they got a power play goal in the first period. And uh, there was no other uh, scoring in the game until uh, about five minutes left to play in the third. Boy, big crowd in this game. This is the biggest we've seen in the games we've done together. It's very cool to see so many of the uh, team's uh, fellow, the uh, players' fellow students coming out to support them as well. Helps out of that it's a Saturday. Everybody also in a festive mood with yeah. it being St. Patrick's Day. The bad Day. news is I wish you and I were closer to like 610 <laughs> uh, because we actually have a lot of obstructed views today. The near corner, I can't see anything. I don't know about you, but I... I it's a blind spot. Uh, Bo Murray, who had that power play goal to start the scoring off against uh, Bennett for Loyola. Lost the puck. One minute to play now in period one. Big shot from the right point. That caught a stick and missed the net wide. Loyola clears it, but Santrasola is able to get a handle on it. Gets it across the blue line. Pulls up. Murray missed the big hit. Still knocked into the ice. But alone was Gregory on the far side. He buries it and scores with 41.2 seconds remaining in the first period. That could be a backbreaker oh for the Loyola he, Academy Ramblers. I didn't get the number of the guy who made the pass from the boards. But I believe that was Santrasola, number 10. Was it? I believe it was. But the problem was that Loyola didn't take the body there. They were trying to get the puck away from him, and they missed. And that's the case where you got to just sandwich the guy against the board so he can't do that. And these two, these guys are too good to just try to take the puck away from him. And now uh, Renner with a shot right across the blue line. Ryzen makes the stop, but he puts his hands up kind of like, come on, guys. I need some help back here. And Gregory was wide open all by himself. I didn't see a yellow. The only no. yellow sweater I saw in the vicinity was Ryzen. Yeah, right. And, you know, these teams are pretty evenly matched, but this could turn into a route. I hate to say it, but it could. The way St. Vider is uh, playing today today so far, the way they played in that quarterfinal game against Sandberg, it very well could be. Meaning 24. if Loyola starts taking lots of chances and all yep. that, I mean, it could, it could go badly. Puck in the St. Vider zone, 16 seconds remaining in the first period. That shot was blocked off the skate. Number 11, Keefe had it and lost it. Renner rushing up to the near side. Seven seconds left. Lost it momentarily. Tried centering it. Hit off the back of the net. Two seconds left. And now it's pinned up against the boards by Loyola on the far side. But what a first period for the St. Viator Lions. They lead it three to nothing. And the state semifinal game winner goes on to the United Center to play St. Rita. Matt, if you're DJ, what do you tell your team right now? I mean... This game is a lot of hockey left here. So what still, do you tell your guys? Still two periods of, of play left. I, I would say you got to sure up the defensive zone. We've had, uh, you know, you got to. These odd man situations? Yeah, these, uh, these odd man situations. You can't let these guys be alone. And, uh, you know, St. Vider executed, you know, had a fluky goal, a well executed play, and then uh, a play where the defense fell asleep late in the, in the first period there. And uh, if you're. Head coach Lavar, you got to say we got to shore up the defensive zone, and we need to start just sending more pucks at the net. I don't think they got too many shots on Schmidt in that first period, and uh, you know the shots that they did take, you know, not there wasn't a, there wasn't a lot on them. There were you know a lot of uh, soft shots that went right to the midsection. Schmidt's a good goal, a big goaltender. He's a good goaltender. He made the All State team. I believe he was an All Star as uh, as well. He was he was on the All State team, and he was also an All Star in the Metro North. So, I mean, you're, you're talking about one of the best goaltenders in the state of Illinois playing on the other end. And, you know, Loyola's got to hope for a cheapie themselves. they got to hope for a cheapie yeah. and uh, just to try and get across the, uh, to get on the scoreboard. We saw in Loyola's victory over Bennett, Bennett struggled. You know, Bennett was struggling to get that first goal the whole time. And it, that was a much closer game, though. one nothing, one nothing, all the way through, through, through uh, midway through the third period. And, you know, Bennett never did scratch one across. But now if you're Loyola, you need to send more pucks yeah. to the net, have more men go to the net, and make sure that you bust uh, your tail getting back on defense to prevent these uh, any type of additional line man breaks. Because we saw a breakaway on a power play. You know, That's a, right. a, a shorthanded opportunity for St. Viator right. 
But, uh, you know, Ryzen, you know, he gave up three goals in that first period, but he did make some big saves. And uh, like I said, at the end there, you know, right off the faceoff, Renner skates it across the blue line, takes a big slapper. Well, I think two seconds might have ticked off the clock. It happened that quickly. And on Renner's shot, you know, right. Ryzen think, had his hands up. I think what DJ I would say is let your defense, let our defense ignite our offense. Your defense, a defense can cause a lot of offensive opportunities by forcing turnovers. I think, and also they need to get the next goal. I would say this, if there was a team that needed to get a next goal, it's Loyola. But let your defense lead your offense now. Second period underway, we had an, off, I mean, an offside call yeah, against the capable, Loyola Ramblers. Rita is, I'm, I'm sorry, Viator is capable of making mistakes too. They can. But we, you know, we saw them, you know, not play necessarily your probably most disciplined game of the year versus Sandberg. But, uh, you know, in that in that game, St. Viner came alive against the Eagles. All their shots started falling. They, I believe they outshot the Sandberg 17-8 in that first period. Taylor Dignan, another uh, All-State goalie, was able to make some uh, nice saves there. Now we see a St. Viner player go straight to there, taken to the boards. He was hit from behind. I can't believe there's no penalty there. But he and was now, pretty close to him. That's why, man, it wasn't, he didn't take a run at him. And now we got a uh, an elbow up there as a Vider player went right into Polivos. They're letting him play. Campanelli backhands it to the neutral zone. Renner trying to get it away from uh, from Schaefer. They're letting him play, but they don't want to let anybody get hurt, so they're not going to let it go too much. Another, another big hit. Yeah. As O'Donnell keeps it in left side. And maybe Schaefer. that's what DJ had to say, is let's take the body, boys. Master Domenico on the turnover shoots it. Save made by Ryzen. So maybe that's what DJ said, is uh, let's take the body. We're letting him skate around like figure skaters. Try and get physical, but also, Loyola, you got to play, start playing with sense of urgency and some desperation. This is it. I mean, this is your season right here. You're in a 3-0 hole. Well, I'm seeing them play with more intensity right now. Loyola gets it out of the zone. It's a foot race for Santrasola and Novi. Santrasola gets to the puck first, turns it over, though, to Warwick. And Warwick passes it up top to Callahan. Callahan on net. That missed the top corner. Novi comes away with it. And now he passes to the front. It's shot from the point. I should say he passed to the point. That shot got deflected, did not go in. And now number 33, Cal Callahan, the sophomore, could not keep it on side. And we'll get a whistle. 15-10 remaining in period two. St. Viator three, Loyola goal zero. Well, this is a different Loyola team than we saw the last five minutes of the first period. They're pretty intense right now. And they're hitting. And they almost got the first their, uh, their first goal. That was a great play there by the defenseman. Connaughton with a shot. Glove save made by Schmidt. That little one was flourish there with it, too. He you know, had a little extra pizzazz. Not the easy, easiest place to beat a goaltender. No. But Schmidt was able to come away with it. Are you trying to tell me, Mike, you never dressed up a uh, glove save in your, uh, in your career? Uh, well. I was just glad to make one. <laughs> 15 minutes of play in the second. Hennessy backhands it to the corner. Decker off the boards and uh, along the near side. My favorite play was faking an injury so people would feel sorry for me. Dice across the blue line, gets it in behind the net. Now Dice gets the uh, puck away from the Loyola defender, centers it in front. And the Ramblers are just able to clear it out of harm's way right there. And it'll be an icing call against Loyola. Boy, a, quite of a rabid fan base on both sides. We got the famous Loyola Puckers to our left in sh wearing white and uh, in shirt sleeves. All, uh, you know, it really isn't that cold in here today. The last couple of days we wore sweaters today. You know, really don't need to. Yeah, it's uh, actually pretty mild in the rink. That could have contributed, too, to uh, the delay we had in the first game where the uh, ice was having a hard time freezing after the uh, after it was resurfaced. And puck in the Loyola zone. Fought for along near side. It's cleared by Polivos. Chased down by number 25 for Loyola. He just missed the net. 
Lifvindahl. What a move to get around the defense, but I didn't think he had a chance to do that. Lifvindahl had the scoring opportunity there. The Lions get it back out to the neutral zone. Cal Kennedy will dump it in. And they're going to call no icing. Lifvindahl took the man there instead of the puck, and now it's deflected out of play along the uh, in the uh, near side corner. We get a whistle. 13:51 remaining in period two. You're li- or you're watching high school hockey on highschoolcube.com. Just a reminder that a replay with highlight clips will be available immediately following the game in your school's cube. So make sure you come back to watch the game or just your favorite plays only on highschoolcube.com. Both of the uh, quarterfinal matchups these teams are involved in is that centering pass. Might have gone off a skate. Either way, Schmidt covers it up in the crease. You also can check out and a number of wonderful interviews on Daily Copic. We've got we've talked to everybody worth talking to, and we also will interview the winning, let's say the oh, certainly the winning coach after this game and one or two of the stars of the game. So look for that. And now Lindsay will be going up two minutes for interference. So third power play of the night for Loyola. They have not been successful so far. A two-minute minor assessed to Lindsay. 13.46 remaining in period three, or period two. I'm getting ahead of myself. Puck was cleared. Back to play it is Callahan. Callahan, right wing pass to Novi. Novi up the boards. Gave it back to St. Vider, who's able to hit it back down the ice. Number 51, now Skarzynski. Pass it to Novi. Novi had his pass broken up. Skarzynski back to play it. Skarzynski to Callahan along the near side. Callahan gets it past one man. And Loyola Gold now on the attack. Callahan shoots. And that's stopped by Schmidt. He didn't know where it was, though. He squeezed that five hole closed, and the puck actually got into the five hole. But he was able to, you know, it, it looks like, when he's just you know swivels his head around, you go, uh oh. But it was a good save. Face off won by Loyola Gold. Played along near side. Skarzinski can't keep it in. Both of these goalies play fairly big in the nets, and what that does it causes shooters to kind of give up on top shelf, so they start going for the five hole, and both of these guys are pretty capable of closing that five hole quickly. Novi shoots it, missed the net. I think Schmidt got a toe on it as it went through the crease. Now another opportunity, Loyola shot. Palivos misses. Warwick backhands it towards Schmidt. Schmidt tumbling towards the eye, stops it. Another five hole attempt. And he was forced to play deep in the net there as Loyola kept going back and forth in behind the net. That's the best sustained pressure we've seen by Loyola in this game. 41 seconds remaining on the power play for the Loyola Gold Ramblers. So Puck hit around the board. Schaefer pulls up at the half boards. Now centering pass to a man wide open. Point blank save made by Schmidt. But the rebound was put in by Loyola. That was number 36. Tom Kennedy, who scores, he gets the Ramblers on the board as he's bobbed along the near side by all of his teammates. A power play goal for Loyola makes it a 3-1 to one game. To his credit, he stayed with that rebound. He stayed right in the net, right off the uh, white, uh, the blue ice next to Schmidt, and then he put it up, I think, just under the crossbar. Did you see where that actually went in? I didn't. I didn't. I looked like, I think... Like, he Schmidt made the initial save, and I think Schmidt got out of position. And uh, I think he was able to bounce that one in off or deflect it off of Schmidt low. All right, okay. The initial save he made off of his shoulder, but then the puck got it. You can't really control a rebound that hits you in the shoulder. No, Schmidt Schmidt did everything he could do there. But uh, credit number uh, 36, Tom Kennedy, the senior for Loyola, on, uh, like you said, following up on the play, but uh, also getting separation. And now it's going to be an icing call well, against the will, uh, Loyola Gold Ramblers. He got separation from the rest of the St. Viator D to be standing there wide open by himself and set him up, uh, set himself up for that uh, scoring play. Under the conditions, he will not have scored a bigger goal this season. That 
there's no way they can afford Viators to go up four to nothing, and that was huge. It's a hockey game right now. They always say two goal lead, worst lead in hockey. Is that what they say? That's what they say. Well, who's they? The I experts. Never, it's the first time I heard it. I think Eddie Shore said it. Old time hockey. Twelve minutes to play. Are we going to see the Hanson brothers? Oh uh, no, no Hansons on the roster. We got a couple of Schaefers though on Loyola. <laughs> the Schaefer brothers. Puck around near side, Dice. Wanted to center, he lost it, gets it back. And now curling, shoots, save made by Ryzen. It's real important. Usually that, the, the most important line change is the line you put out there after you finally get a goal. Because a lot of times the other team will come back and score. It was a letdown, you know, and so that was a big save there. The Ramblers can't afford a letdown. They're no. down by two goals right now. But the biggest thing is they got that first one on Schmidt. The way things were going early, I didn't know if they were going to be able to beat Schmidt. But now Kester all alone. He missed the puck. Oh, that was, that was that. very it's close. David Kellner, not Kessner, but Kellner, he was suspended in the last game, did not play against Bennett. 11.20 to play in the second period. Three ones are score. Loyola trying to claw back in this game. Shot by Warwick, goes in! That was kind of a broken play, Matt. The, the initial shooter fanned on it, and Schmidt had gone down with that shot that was whiffed on, and so he was really, had exposed the top part of the net, and I didn't get the number of the shooter. That was number 77, the sophomore, Jimmy Warwick. So it was like a broken play that actually turned out for Loyola's benefit. Schmidt was already out of position, Warwick. Got the puck on his stick, lifted it up, and beat Schmidt. It is now 3-2. to two. So St. Vider looked like they were going to run away with it after they took a 3-0 lead in the first period. But now Loyola goal, got a power play goal, and now they are able to notch their second one of the day. Well, maybe and, the uh, two-goal lead is the most dangerous lead in hockey. We'll see who scores next if Loyola can actually tie it. Now, Loyola Gold came into this game ranked third in state in the Red Varsity Division of the Blackhawk Cup Tournament. And uh, depending on what poll you, you looked at, I saw them ranked number one as of yeah. uh, in the state and as of uh, March 12th. And uh, I believe it was uh, United States Hockey, uh, United States High School Hockey yeah. ranked them actually number one over New Trier and uh, St. Viator. Well, you know, maybe they bought into your argument about a two-goal lead, so Vider decided to make it only a one-goal lead because that's not as dangerous as a two-goal lead, according to <laughs> them, whoever they are. I don't think that's what they had in mind. Next goal is huge. And now Loyola almost got it across. Puck loose in front. We see it again. Polivos had his stick tied up by O'Donnell. It looked like an open net, didn't it? Oh, my. Somebody lifted a stick, and that's how that was prevented. St. Vider has got to uh, ice it, but it won't go the distance for icing. Callahan is able to fake out Campanelli. But the uh, breakout attempt through the middle did not work for Loyola. They still get it down the ice. Polivo shakes off one man, now gets it to Lippendahl. Lippendahl had keep right there. Great defensive play. Boy, Loyola is on fire right now. They're really Saint Vider, they the look play. like a completely different team than what... Uh, now what was on the ice in the first period. O'Donnell skates it out. Didn't get it across center, and that's going to be an icing against St. Vider. O'Donnell only had to take a couple more strides to get across center. But, uh, I mean, that's a, that's a side, of, side of a tired hockey player. He was just trying to clear it down the ice, get it out of the zone. It, and uh, not necessarily realizing... The situation of where he was, he did take a couple more strides, and now it's second period, it's a longer change, and uh, hands up taking the icing. So Loyola, who's been all over St. Vider, they win the faceoff, they get another offensive uh, faceoff. And this isn't because of Schmidt's fault either, they're all over him. Santos Sola pulls up, now passes it to Decker. Decker gets hit by Gavula, but Gavula's the one who goes to the ice. Back in the neutral zone, Gavula gets there, right wing side, avoids one check, but gets knocked down by Kellner. 
Lions get it back up, ice pass, hits Renner in the stick. Now Renner trying to make, put a move on, he can't. Puck along the near side, and we have a whistle. I believe they're going to say the puck hit off of a uh, someone on the St. Viator bench. And uh, now they're going to have the faceoff in the neutral zone. So well, 8.42 remaining in the second. 3 is our score. Loyola on top. They scored the first three, or St. Viator on top. They scored the first three goals of the game, but Loyola has fought back scoring the last two in the second period. Well, Loyola, for a long time in this game, had been playing in neutral, and then they started rambling when they had that power play opportunity and cashed in, and they've been on fire ever since. It's Ryder trying the to put a plug in the, uh, in the dike right now. They still Wait. have the lead, though. Murray across center, now changes direction. But that change of direction cost them an offside. Yeah. I think that was a 21, Zach Scholl, who ended up offsides on the off wing. He had an extra zig when uh, his line mate thought he only was going to zag. So far, I think the officiating in this game has been a non-factor. They're calling the game pretty well. I haven't seen any missed. No, it's been a, yeah. it's been a very crisply officiated so far. And they're letting them play. Loyola dumps it down in the St. Viator zone. Clearing attempt goes up top to the blue line. Murray was able to get the puck away from number 18, Keegan Thornton. And now Schaefer's shot goes off of Hobner's skate. Boy, Deflects I mean, into the St. Viator zone. The Lions will skate it out. Loyola has decidedly been playing rough since that first period. And now we have a uh, delayed offside there. Liffendahl uh, chasing it down on the backhand. Now changes direction, trying to go like, get the wrap around. Didn't have enough space, though. As Schmidt was able to get enough of his body out in front. Boy, Matt, we've been watching two different hockey games, practically. And St. Vider now has to try and ice it. That's not going to be enough. Loyola up ice pass. And Liffendahl had some time there. He had him and Pol uh, Polivos. Liffendahl made the quick pass, but Polivos couldn't catch up with it. Now it's sent down the ice once again. And Vider really back on their heels. I'm just really surprised how this game has just turned, like, flipped. A 180. Puck goes to Callahan on the circle, shoots it. And that made it through. And Schmidt may got a uh, left pad on it. They'll go back up top to Callahan. Slap shot this time. Schmidt had to fight it off with the blocker. He went down rather quickly. I've noticed that about Schmidt. He goes down at the crack yeah. of the uh, yeah. of the stick, and that's not always good. As uh, right there, that one almost caught him right in the face. Right. Six thirty remaining. Callahan once again missed left. But Loyola is doing what they want in the offensive zone. They keep feeding the defenseman, trying to get those deflections in front, trying to set up screens in front of Schmidt. And Schmidt's been running around his crease yeah. <laughs> the whole period. You know, Matt, I, I, the Viator defenders are going down, laying down to block shots. Renner shoots, and Skarzynski got a piece of it. It went off of the netting above the glass. Great deflection. Skarzanski right there. That was textbook shot blocking. What I was about to say on the other end, Viator's laying down at the trying to block a shots from the point. I'd be tempted to fake a couple of shots and just dance or go right around them. Lock in and try and yeah. set up a yeah. closer in shot. It's yeah. A, it's available. We'll see if Loyola recognizes that and can make the adjustment. Kennedy off the uh, boards. Looked like he wanted to go off the boards, but uh, I believe that went onto the bench. I don't know. I can't see because there are so many students here for St. Vider that we cannot even see it, the uh, St. Vider bench at all so from the, where we're broadcasting from. So the Vider student body is not being transparent. They're really not being... Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was. Oh, oh, Face-off oh, goes past Ryzen. And Loyola is still able to clear. 
Gavula across the blue line, force wide, makes a move, shoot save made by Schmidt. Gavula put a great move on the defenseman. Faked like he was going outside, brought the puck back into his body. Wanted to go 5-0 on Schmidt. Schmidt closed it up. More importantly for him, he held on to the rebound. This reminds me of one of the Rocky movies where you're just trying to get through the round to get to the bell so you can get, get back to your corner. And that's what Vider looks like right now. These two teams fighting for a trip to the United Center on Friday night. A winner will meet up with the St. Rita Mustangs. You they and I get it. to go there, too, without the bumps and the bruises, though. Yeah. <laughs> Lindzik wins the fate or uh, gets it through the neutral zone and it sticked away from him though at the blue line That's gonna be icing on Loyola As it just gets across the line Decker looked like he might have been able to catch up to it You know what'll be fun Matt is I think we'll probably get to be at the upper area uh, Where they actually broadcast the the Blackhawk games on oh, the, the, the press box yeah, area and stuff. And we'll have a gr I mean right now we are fighting for view we're going to have a, the catbird seat at the United Center. And monitors. And monitors. Face off in the Loyola zone. One to Callahan. He sends it around the boards near side. It gets played up to the neutral zone. That went through Scholl skates. And Scholl chases it down. And now Lavazario backhands it. In front, nobody there though for Loyola. Potential four on two right now. Joyce gets oh, pumped off the right. puck though. Nice defensive play by Burns. 4.43 remaining in the second period. Turnover gives it back to St. Vider. Shot in front, save made by Ryzen. Second save made and it goes, but it goes in. Yeah, he made two saves. And then he left the rebound off the right pad just in the right part of the blue ice. I don't know who got a stick on it, but it was a half-empty net, Matt. I think that was number 37 for St. Viator, Matt, uh, Michael Hobner. I believe that was Hobner. And this started with the Loyola defense collapsing toward the net instead of challenging and taking the body outside. And once the shooter got in that close, Ryzen made the save. He even made another save, but by that point... There were three white sweaters right in front of him, and somebody got a stick on it. He made the second save, but he just—he was just down and out. Yeah. He was just stopping it up with the. He had uh, made the second save with the right pad, but I mean, he had no chance yeah. right there. But that's why and, you uh, can't collapse in on your goalie. You got to push him out. They did give credit to uh, number 37, Hobner. So yeah. Hobner gets a goal. Well, this is bad news for Vider because they have a two-goal lead now. This is bad. We'll see how the rest of the period goes. 4-2 <laughs> is our score. 4.26 remaining in the second. Face-off in the St. Viator zone. That's a shock. I mean, they've been on the ropes for the last 10 minutes, and all of a sudden they get a goal. And that was a big goal. Liftendahl gets it over to number eight. Polivos had the shot. Let's see if Loyola can maintain the intensity. Schaefer. Avoids a check from Lindzig and somehow gets it up to Keefe. Keefe across the blue line, winds up, shot blocked by Santrasola. That went right off his pants le uh, pant leg. To their credit, Vi oh, Vi Viators is continuing to keep people back to, to not allow Loyola to get odd man situations. Schaefer bounces it in on net. That's scooped up like a shortstop there. Was that Starlin Castro? Yeah, Schmidt made the uh, nice bounce, uh, sa I imagine the nut save as it bounced off the ice. Those are tricky shots for a goaltender. And that time, Schmidt going down early played uh, played to his favor as he was able to uh, cover up most of the lower portion of the net. Speaking of Starlin Castro, we're almost getting ready for uh, opening day. I, I can't remember being so nice outside at this time of the year. That shot goes wide. But usually if it's nice now, it's going to be a 12 inches of snow at the end of the month. Let's hope not. Renner last to touch it for St. Vider. Novi has to skate it in for Loyola. He goes to the corner. Lost it. But now gets the pass over to Schaefer. Schaefer back to Novi. Novi overskated it. Missed it. 
St. Vider got it out. Kellner passing it up ice for Renner. Renner gets it on the turnover. Renner shoots it. That went high. Rising got a piece of it. I think it stung him a little bit. And Rising in some pain as uh, also he had Kellner crash right into him. But he, he got the glove on it, didn't he? The webbing. It looked like glove? he got the glove on it, but uh, I'm not sure exactly what that was. He was looked a little uh, little shaken up right there, yeah. but he'll stay in. 301 remaining in period two. He's yeah, he's he got stung a little bit. Faceoff will be to the left of Ryzen. It'll be Dyson Murray. Puck to flex in on Ryzen. He has to stick that away. Hits it to the near corner. Now no, or took that Murray around the boards over to Skarzinski. Skarzinski gets it out, but not by much. Decker is able to hit it back across. Skarzinski right wing side. And that goes past Scholl's stick. Santorsola gets to it first. There's Hennessy right on him, gets past Hennessy, and gets the pass right to Obner. Good break out there for St. Vider, but the puck was sticked away by Murray. St. Vider forced to try and get it out of the zone again. They do, and it's lifted in by number 37, Griff Burns, for the Loyola Academy Ramblers. As I mentioned, this is the third time in the 2011-2012 season these two clubs have met. St. Vider's got the best of Loyola both times. But uh, those meetings were earlier in the year, one in October, one in November. In one point of this game, it was three to nothing, Viators. Loyola bounced back. 150 to play in the second period. They're going to wave off the icing there. Decker wanted to pass it to O'Donnell. O'Donnell didn't have a stick on the ice. Keefe hits it across the blue line on the backhand. Liffendahl chasing it down. Overskated the puck. St. Vider on the breakout near side. They get it out of the zone. Loyola gets control of it, though. Schaefer. There's always a game within a game, and if the one game is always the goaltending duel, right now I'd have to say Schmidt is ahead in that game. Yeah, Schmidt has come up big, especially uh, really, I mean, he gave up two goals midway through the second period, but he really weathered the storm even more yeah. by uh, coming up with some huge saves. Because this game could have easily been tied and or Loyola could have taken the lead the way things were going there for a while. But now we have less than a minute to play in the second. The Nick Schaefer across the blue line flips it in. Warwick on the near side trying to chase it down. What changed this game, I think, was Loyola coming out with great physicality. And then it resulted in a power play goal. Pass back to Schaefer. Schaefer on net. Keep at a stick on it, but Gregory was able to block it. St. Vider was sending Renner on the far side. He's trying to get some separation, but the defenseman was hanging back with them. Number 19, uh, Joey Schaefer. The brother of Nick. And now an opportunity down low is stopped by Schmidt. And Schmidt is able to cover it up. 14.1 seconds to go in the period. That was a very long shift for Viators, and they're exhausted as they come off the ice. They needed that whistle, whistle desperately. What do you got, 14 seconds left? 14 Something seconds there. left in the second. We'll see if Loyola throws everything they can at, uh, at St. Vider to try and maybe get one more pass Schmidt before the period ends. Gavula and Kellner on the draw. Puck bouncing. Gavula gets it. Has it on the backhand. Eight seconds left. Gavula in the corner. Lost it. Santosola plays it for St. Vider. He can't clear. Skarzinski holds it in. Couldn't get much on the shot as it went to Kellner. You hear the horn sound. Period two has come to a uh, has come to an end, and the St. Vider Lions, with a 4-2 lead, are 17 minutes of play away from meeting up with their rivals from the Chicago Catholic Hockey League, the St. Rita Mustangs, and a date in the uh, state championship in the United Center. We'll see what the Loyola, Cat uh, Loyola the Loyola Academy Ramblers have to say about that. As we uh, we have only one minute or one period left to play in the uh, state semifinals. Yep. Yep. And Matt, I, I think 
if I'm DJ, uh, I just tell them, keep coming at them, play physical. That's what changed this game was the physical nature Loyola came out with in the second period. And I think they may have wore Viators out a little bit. So we'll see. Uh, I think Viator needed this intermission more maybe than Loyola did. We'll see. As, uh, it is the uh, end of the second period. We will be putting a couple interviews from DailyCopic.com. Both, uh, both will feature Chet Copic, one of the uh, founders of DailyCopic.com. We'll have John Camp- uh, Campanelli, a senior forward for St. Vider, being interviewed by Chet. And we'll also have uh, the Saliba brothers, who are the assistant coaches for Loyola, being interviewed by Chet. The Saliba brothers also are alums of, uh, or alumni, I should say, of Loyola Academy. So we're going to take a break. Both teams will grab a breather in the locker room as they uh, also resurface the ice. And uh, enjoy the interviews uh, that can also be found on dailycopic.com. You're watching High School Playoff Hockey on highschoolq.com.
We are back live at the uh, Dice Arena. We apologize about the uh, interview running a little late there. That's uh, from dailycopic.com. The interview didn't run late itself. They actually really cut down on the intermission. They did not give the teams a full amount of time. They've been giving teams uh, about 15 minutes, but right after they brought both uh, uh, both uh, Zambonis out here to resurface the ice, they really just kind of did a dry run here after they didn't want what happened between the uh, second and third period of the first state semifinal game to happen here where they had too much water on the ice. So uh, right after they resurfaced it, they were trying to get both these teams back out there. It is 6 o'clock local time, uh, central time, and they have a junior hockey game coming up. Is that uh, shot went on net? The defenseman for St. Vider got in the way. Santa Solo went right in front of his goaltender. And... Uh, Luckily for them, that was an offside call against Loyola. 16.04 remaining in the third period, so don't worry. Didn't miss any uh, anything too exciting. I'm at Mish broadcasting live at the uh, on the Edge West rink, the premier, uh, premier rink at the Edge Ice Arena in Bensonville, Illinois. St. Vider leads Loyola Gold 4-2 through t- uh, two periods of play. Winner goes on to meet up with the St. Rita Mustangs in, at the United Center in the state championship game. That game will be on Friday, March 23rd. Owens turns it over. Polivos dumps it back in. Murphy behind his own net. Will skate it out and then hit off Renner, sticking out of the zone. Thank you for joining us on HighSchoolCube.com, your home for high school sports in the Chicago area. Had a great Sports season this past year. We were here home for high school football, high school basketball. It's great we're able to bring you high school hockey. Just a reminder, replay of this game will be available on on, uh, highschoolcube.com in your high school's cube. And also, if you're enjoying the broadcast, you can tweet at highschoolcube.com. Also, tell your friends, let them know St. Viator has a two-goal lead with 14.53 remaining in the third period. Schaefer passes it near side to Liffendahl. Liffendahl, check that, that's Murray across the blue line. Lost it, and it will be a two on one. Now a two on two is Dice. This flips in a soft wrister on Ryzen. Defenseman came off the bench for Loyola. I I thought that was going to be a two on one. That forced Dice to uh, just go wide, take the shot, didn't even uh, attempt the pass. 14.35 to play now in period three. Lions are trying to get back to the state championship game for what, for what would be the, only the third time in their history. And St. Vider has never won the uh, championship game. They were a runner-up in 1979 and 1989. But still a lot of time left. Centering pass by Scholl hit Hennessy in the stick. Hennessy wasn't in a good position, though. To try and get a shot up. Now he centers it through the blue paint. Nobody there for Loyola. Bo Murray now backhand shot stopped by Schmidt. Decker hits it to the near side. And now on the breakout, Obner just barely gets it across the across his own blue line. So it comes out of the zone. 13:46 to play in the third period, and we have icing against the Loyola Gold Ramblers. Thank you for joining us on HighSchoolCube.com. High School Cube provides absolutely every single high school team in COVID America their very own cube to broadcast in. So make sure you visit HighSchoolCube.com forward slash get started to start broadcasting your team today. We hope that this week will be the uh, beginning of uh, continued coverage of high school hockey going into the 2012-2013 season on HighSchoolCube.com. Santos Sola passes it up ice to Joyce. Joyce up, Joyce up the left wing side, and I am once again joined by Mike Romano, voice of the Chicago Steel. You know, Matt, it's tempting to say, well, we got a lot of time left. You have to have a sense of urgency right now. You have to have it. This is the season for Loyola Gold. They're down by two goals. And and they can't re- afford any more mis- uh, mental or physical mistakes out there. And having played the game, uh, you understand, too, that when you're losing, the clock moves like, <laughs> just moves so fast. And when you're winning, it's real slow. Can't click down fast enough for St. Vider, but Loyola Gold 
keeps watching it. You know, it, it's really tough for them being down by two goals as well in this spot. Now another sh a, uh, shot there. Ryzen makes the stop. Some players are starting to look tired. I mean, I think there's a lot of double shifting going on. And I'm not going <laughs> to mention net numbers, but some guys are dragging. And at this stage of the season, man, I have no idea how many guys are playing hurt. You know what it's like. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure these, everybody's bruised up, dinged up. These, some of these guys have played close to 60 games probably. Don't forget all the practices. These guys go through clubs like at this level with St. Byron and Loyola. Schmidt makes a nice stave with the uh, with the shoulder and able to control the rebound. And this level, I mean, these guys practice probably three times a week. Easy. But right now, you gotta uh, you gotta forget about all the, you gotta forget about all that. Nothing else matters except for the next 12 minutes and 24 seconds of play. Both teams just kind of leave it all on on the ice. And now that was close. Garzinski wasn't able to keep it out. In the lobby uh, during the break, I actually got a chance to talk with Talbot's father. Now a play for Palavi uh, Pal Off his mask, I think. Palavios had the shot. Schmidt made the great save coming out. Penalty is coming up against Loyola. Check that. It'll be against uh, St. Viator. Yeah. And we will have... Is that interference, or what was that? They're going to call oh, it a trip. 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 The interesting, uh, the conversation with Talbot's dad, you know, we certainly talked about the first goal of the game, and he said, who is it, number... We'll see. I think it's 28, maybe. O'Donnell, the defenseman. Yeah, 28. And, you know, he said it goes with the territory. Sometimes, you know, during the, all the games his son has played over the many years, that goes with the territory. You're going to have some go goals that you wish you could have back. And That's the right. So, man. so the dad was took it pretty well, and the boy took it well. He said that's just it's just too bad the way it had to be his last game. I mean, the defeat hurt. It's a tough way to end it because yeah. St. Vider yeah. is able to clear. I mean, that game could have gone. I mean, it's it wouldn't be unimaginable that Nutria could have scored five or six goals in that game. No, that extra pretty plat, you know, pass. Unfortunately for them, they took that a couple too many times, and that, uh, yeah. that, that goal ended up being the difference. It was a one-goal game. We're not seeing that in this game very much. I think St. Vider's maybe taking a couple of opportunities to make that extra pass. But Loyola on a critical power play right now. Shot goes through the crease. Boy. Novi had the shot there for the Ramblers. And now Decker will skate it out. It's a three-on-one for St. Vider, shorthanded. That pass to Lindsay was a bit behind him. And now the Ramblers trying to get an odd man break the other way. Novi circles, shoots. That goes off Santos Sola skate and will be clear down the ice. Boy, if both teams giving it their all. They're skating to the bench with no gas in the tank. 38 seconds remaining on the power play. Bo Murray across the blue line. High slot. Had his stick tied up, but still gets the shot on. <laughs> wow, what a play there by Murray. He picked but it up right off the ice with his glove, Matt. And Schmidt made a great save there. Scooped it up off the ice. <laughs> 30 seconds left on the man advantage for Loyola. 10-24. You they might as well... Matt, you might as well go all out tonight. You got plenty of time to rest till Friday, right? Yeah, they've got one power play goal. That was the first one of the game. That was scored by number 36, Tom Kennedy. Kennedy will be taking the faceoff for Loyola. He'll be squaring off with Owens. A lot of time to rest for the rest of the week. Now, it, on the far side there, it looked like number 20, Murphy, was almost calling for the timeout, but a shot out the faceoff stopped by Schmidt. Wow, he's playing well. He's seeing the puck well. Murray half boards. That went off Murphy's stick. They can't clear though up the middle. Schaefer with a shot. Play number eight, John Campanelli giving up the body. He's shaking up, blocking that shot. The puck came out of the zone. Kennedy makes a move. Now he's forced wide, shoots high, and missed the net. Wow. 
Loyola's getting frustrated as another penalty's coming up. This one against the Ramblers. It'll be a head contact oh. call against Loyola. Well, what's left after you throw the kitchen sink, Matt? What do you throw after that? Might be time to go home. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. They're going to call Schaefer for that, a minor. And they are trying to shoot high on Schmidt, but they're just shooting it over the crossbar. I think they've got the right idea. So the penalty had expired to uh, O'Donnell. And it'll be, now be a power play for St. Vider. That shot goes in on Ryzen. He makes the stop and hangs on. Only the second power play of the day for St. Vider. You know, Matt, it, it is really takes a lot out of you to continue to try to play physical because that's really what got Loyola back into the game. But, you know, you're late in the game and you're still trying to be physical and you're two goals behind. You know, you can start running out of gas. It takes a lot more energy to give a check than take a check. Lindsay across the blue line. You're going to call either uh, Renner or, or Kellner for the offsides there. We've been talking a lot about Loyola. If you're Viator right now, what are you thinking? Just th two or three men back, take care of the puck, no passes up the middle, off the boards. And everything out, off the boards, know. clear. Yeah. Go, go to the sides, No, nothing. Try not to clear anything up the middle. Try not to get too fancy. I mean, you hate to say you want to, you're, that they're going to sit on the two-goal lead, but you can't, all, you can't be too aggressive, though. You don't want to start taking uh, silly chances oh, wow. down the ice when you're already up by two yeah. and the uh, the clock is on your side. You just send two four checkers. You don't send three. Santra Sola passes it over to number 24, Kellner. Kellner couldn't get the shot off. It went to Renner. Renner now gets it to Lindsay. Lindsay shot blocked by Hennessy. Hennessy trying to clear it. He doesn't. Santra Sola keeps it in at the right point. In behind the net, Kellner tried to center it. Went to the half boards. 59 seconds. Loyola will barely get it out. Linzig back to play it. Linzig, another one of these highly decorated St. Vider players. He made the All-State team. He'll be on the showcase team heading to Pittsburgh. His shot stopped by Ryzen. And uh, smartly there, the uh, defenseman there, Hennessy, was able to uh, check that the four Hennessy put that right next to uh, Ryzen's glove as he covered it up. But Linzig was also named to the uh, Chicago Catholic Hockey League's All-Star team as a uh, as well as the Metro North All-Star team. So, Lindsay has been named uh, every All-Star, uh, has made every uh, all, every All-Star uh, team he can possibly make in the uh, in the season. We well, should be on a box of Wheaties pretty soon, don't yeah, you think? He, he's, had a, he's had a heck of a year, and I'm sure he'd like to uh, punch his ticket to the United Center. Murphy with a high sh uh, high wrist shot, well down by Ryzen. 8.14 remaining in period two. 22 seconds remaining on the power play for St. Vider. I'm Matt Mish alongside Mike Romano. We're broadcasting live at the Edge Ice Arena on HighSchoolCube.com. I'm tempted to say next goal wins because if Loyola can get another one, Callahan I think they're going to catch off him. the glass and out. That should just about do it for the St. Vider power play. Murphy, stick handling behind his net, four seconds to go. As now they get it across to Owens. Owens at its pocket pick by Polivos. Penalty's over, Loyola's back to full strength. And they send Kennedy up the boards. Kennedy had to get back on side. Vider well, playing with a lot of grit. They've taken uh, the lickings that Loyola's dishing out. Callahan jumps in the play, can't keep it in though as he pinched down deep. Skarzinski almost wristed that one out of play. That went off the glass. That leads to a shot along the ice. Easy save there for Schmidt. I read the rule book, and it doesn't say in there that your wins have to be pretty. They don't have to be. They just have to be a win. And Vider is hanging on right now, being doing the best they can. And let's face it, Loyola has to do this. They've got to come with all this energy. They got to get two goals. Vider just has to take care of business right now. That is a tall task yeah. for Loyola. And Vider, the, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, Vider came out with a lot of energy and got the that first goal, which was you know unfortunate for Loyola. 
But Viator took it to him, and it didn't change till the second period when Loyola decided to get physical. But they were already down three to nothing. Through 22 games in the uh, Metro North, St. Viator averaged four and a half goals a game, only gave up two goals a game. Yep. Through 22 games in the Chicago Catholic Hockey League, they scored 4.8 goals per game, only gave up 1.9. Yeah. So right now we're sitting at 4-2. <laughs> They're hitting their averages. Yeah. You know, they might get another yeah. goal here, you know, if you if you believe the stats or believe in the numbers. Yeah. But, I mean, that's a tribute to the team defense and yeah. also to, uh, you know, an outstanding goaltender in Rob Schmidt. This was the faceoff caused by the puck hitting the ceiling. Gavula gets it over to to uh, Novi. Novi sends it to the corner to Warwick. Warwick tried putting it on net. That went off of a Viator stick. That was centering pass. That was stopped by a uh, Decker. And they almost got it down low to Warwick. Warwick on the backhand passes it to Novi. Novi shooting high. It was stopped by Schmidt. Now Skarzynski flips it towards the net. Schmidt never saw it. Never no. even turned his head. No, he didn't. And Skarzynski could have got that on net. That might have... Uh, been a much better scoring opportunity as uh, St. Viator ends up icing it once again. 6.32 to play in the third period. 4-2 is our score. The Lions on top. If the score ends like this, who is your player of the game for Viators? Ooh, for St. Viator, I, I'd really like to give it to Schmidt oh. as he makes another point blank stop. Splendid save with the left pad. That's, I'm looking at him right there. I think he's the star of the game. Schmidt's made a lot of saves now. I mean, he wasn't tested as much in the first period, but that second period, even though he gave up two goals, there wasn't much he could do on the goals. No. And he may still made a ton of saves on, uh, on the Loyola Academy Ramblers. And even now in the third period, you know, neither team has uh, been able to score. That last save looked period. easier than it was. He actually made it look easy. That easily could have gone through his legs. And I think what what uh, what you've seen with Loyola is they have been frustrated by Schmidt. Owens gets it over to Gregory. That just went over his stick. Gregory does have a goal in tonight's game. Puck goes to the far side now. Owens up top, winds up. That blast went off of a skate, went right to O'Donnell. O'Donnell will wrist it, and that was well wide. 5.31 remaining in the third. Puck trickles in on Ryzen. Loyola will be able to clear it before they go off for the change. And now That's Dice stripped of the puck at the blue line. Too many moves. Loyola Academy across. That's Polivos. Polivos shoots it. Getting back to uh, the frustration there for Loyola is now all, every single shot they, they realize they can't beat Schmidt low, not on a dead you know not on a straight on shot. They're trying to go everything high, and uh, you know Loyola doesn't seem like they have as the uh, the sharp shooting is not pinned accurate tonight. Trying to pick those corners, as uh, someone look there's a piece of a debris or equipment on the ice. It almost looks like a piece of a it's pant. A, it's a thigh a shell, pad. yeah, a thigh pad on the. It's a, it's a thigh the pad pant. down there. That puck is clear down the ice. No icing. I guess you'd be tempted to say they're trying to beat the pants off of them. Well, depending who it was, if it's uh, Loyola who's lost it. Now Callahan with a big blast. That hit off of a man in front. Went wide of the net. And now it deflects out of play, I believe. 4.21 remaining in the third period. And St. Viator can smell that trip to the United Center, wow. West Madison. That's going to be fun for us, too. I mean, it's a thrill to call the game from where Pat Foley sits, all, I mean, our hero. and So that'll be a lot of fun. Face off to the right of Schmidt. Draw one by Loyola. Novi fighting, high slot, trying to get the shot off. O'Donnell all over him. Still got it towards the net. That missed wide. Referees Backhanded are, out of the uh, zone here. Referees are really letting them play right now as much as they can. They don't want to decide the game. Four minutes. Lindsay without a glove, moving in, gets past one man, shoots it high, rise and makes the save. And that was a pretty nifty move that uh, Lindsay was able to make there without yeah. his glove. Yeah, Viator has some very skilled players as well. Loyola, they, they were hanging Novi out along the blue line here. He's cherry picking. And now Novi through the middle, missed the puck. And they're going to call the icing. 
Well, Viator getting it done. They've been on the ropes a little bit. Loyola's been playing desperate hockey, but Viator's fighting them off. And they did their heavy lifting early in the game where they took that 3 to nothing lead, and they've been able to ride that lead pretty much to this point. So Viator, if they win this game, they are very deserving Skarzynski on the rush up the near side. Couldn't pull the trigger on the shot. And it's cleared by St. Vider. 3.17 to play. Time running out for Loyola Gold. Yeah, right now you're playing two, en- two opponents. Viders and the clock. Centering pass goes out of the zone. Vider doesn't care, though, as it's hit back across the line by Decker. Look, they've got three men back, too. Under three to play in this third period. Two goal lead for St. Vider. Loyola's going to have to get past three guys at least to get to Schmidt. That's backhanded the other way. Won't be icing. Someone from Loyola tried touching it. I believe they got a piece of it. That pass goes up ice to no one. Two and a half minutes, Matt. St. Vider turns it over in the neutral zone. Backhanded by Lavazario. 4 is our score. St. Viator on top. They beat Loyola in the previous two meetings this season. Trying to go for the third time. Kellner couldn't pull the uh, puck to the forehand there. United Center just two minutes away. Now a shot wide by Polivos. Two minutes to play in the third period. As things have actually gotten kind of quiet in here. Renner puts it towards the front. That almost went off of Schaefer's stick and in. Do you pull the goalie at some point here? I mean, you, you got Loyola's to. going to have to, but they've had a, they can't even get it across the uh, St. Viator blue line and get any type of control. Yeah. And it's now a turnover to Lindsay. Lindsay shoots. Glove save made by Ryzen. My, that was a great save. Ryzen gets the big trapper out there. Stops Lindsay point blank. You know that keeps it four two, and uh, I think they're going to be there's going to be a timeout called here. I think Coach Lavar is going to take his timeout. I can't imagine uh, Coach Lappin taking the timeout. Yeah. Having played that position, that kind of save is not looking. I mean, reacting to where the puck's going. It's anticipation too. It's guessing that's where he's going. If you wait to see, it's too late. So I guess, you know, Mike, 135 remaining in the third period. Looking ahead, should St. Vider hold on to this lead, which at this point in time, it, it looks like they'll really be able to. They played St. Rita four times in the 2011-2012 season. Now, of course, they played them in the Chicago Catholic Hockey League. They met up with Rita three times in the regular season. St. Rita got the best of them there, winning two out of three games. St. Rita won 4-1 and 5-3 before St. Viator finally was able to beat the Mustangs by a score of 7-3. Those two teams also met up in the Loyola uh, Academy Thanksgiving Tournament in the championship game. That game was won by the St. Viator Lions. So of the four total matchups, each team has won two. St. Viator able to beat St. Rita in the championship game of the Loyola Thanksgiving Tournament. That was a 4-2 to two victory for the St. Vider Lions. Well, certainly this faceoff does not help Loyola because they can't get the extra attacker out. They're going to need a faceoff win, and they're going to need to break it out quickly. They get the, vic- the uh, faceoff win. The pass up by Stanovi went past his stick. And it's now Polivos with a shot. Oh. That missed the net. Ryzen. Oh is on the bench, 122 remaining in the third period. I don't think that shot missed by more than a couple of inches. I don't know how that didn't go in, actually. Six men on the ice for Loyola. Net's empty, and that's offside. Polivos just uh, couldn't get the the brakes on there. (laughs) He saw his teammate right in front of him. That wasn't... uh, you know, your normal situation on the offside, you might have the off wing, just a little over anxious or something like that, but his teammate was right there. Well, I'm going to have to leave you now and get ready to interview uh, 
the winner. And right now, I think it looks like it's going to be Vider. I'll see you a little bit later. All right. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for joining us for the quarterfinals and the semifinals. One minute remaining in the third period. St. Vider with a two-goal lead. Empty net for Loyola. And Decker across center is able to dump it in. Puck around the boards. Pass by Lipfendahl is intercepted by Renner. Renner was rather quiet for uh, St. Viner tonight after he scored a hat trick versus Sandberg. 40 seconds remaining now in the third period. St. Viner. Only 30 seconds from meeting up with their rivals from the Chicago Catholic Hockey League. The St. Rita Mustangs. Crowd making some noise. That shot from Callahan was deflected in front, ricocheted away. 17 seconds left. Now Callahan with another shot. Man hit off a stick and went wide. 10 seconds remain. Puck in the St. Vider zone. Pass in front. Callahan with a shot. Schmidt makes the save. And he hangs on to it. 4.3 seconds left in the third period. 4.3 seconds left in the Loyola Gold season. They trail it by two in 4.3 seconds until the St. Viator Lions beat Loyola Gold for the third time this season and advance to the Red Varsity State Championship game. So we'll have a face-off to the right of Schmidt after he made that save. And Mike Romano will be interviewing Coach Lappin and a player of the game for uh, DailyCopic.com. Face-off won by St. Viator. They flip it out of the zone. Polivos caught it, but the horn sounds. This place goes crazy. St. Viator is heading to the state championship game where they will play the St. Rita Mustangs. And the number two team, the Lions, knock off the number three team, the Loyola Gold Ramblers. And what was a... Uh, an up and down game, really a tale of two periods between the first and the second. First one was dominated by St. Vider. The second one, Loyola, came out like gangbusters. They were able to get within one goal. They made it a 3-2 to two game. They just could not get the equalizer. There was a backbreaker towards the end of the second period that was scored by Michael Obner. And that goal really just kind of took it out of Loyola. The, uh, the difference maker, though, was uh, scored by Gregory for St. Vider. He had the third goal, and the uh, St. Vider Lions will try and go for the hat trick in terms of uh, tournaments. And they won the Loyola Thanksgiving tournament. They won the Blackhawk Charities tournament at Christmas time. And now they will go to the United Center to play for the 2012 Blackhawk Cup Championship in the Red Varsity Division. Congratulations to uh, Loyola on a great season. Unfortunately for the Ramblers, they come up a bit short today versus St. Vider. As this crowd's still very loud. Thank you for uh, joining us. For all six games that High School Cube was able to cover, we had all four quarterfinal games and the uh, two state semifinal games today. Just a reminder, a rebroadcast of the game will be immediately uh, will be available at highschoolcube.com in uh, both the Loyola Cube as, uh, and the St. Viator Cube. And uh, all the games that High School Cube covered, high school uh, hockey-wise, will be available to watch once again. So uh, thank you for uh, joining us today. Got some other thank yous to dish out. Larry and Elizabeth Cotter. Uh, and all the folks out at, uh, in High School Cube. Thank you to our uh, QA person today, Jim McAteer. Thank you to my producer on site, Jason Lasaja, the camera operator and uh, producer, doing a heck of a job uh, fighting through the crowd to make sure that we could bring you this exciting high school hockey action. Also, thanks to all the folks at the Daily Com at uh, DailyCopic.com, Mike Romano, who is my play-by-play -play man, uh, Mike Scholl, and also the legend Chet Kopic, who unfortunately uh, wasn't able to be here today. But, uh, you know, we hope Chet is uh, feeling better. And make sure you go to dailycopic.com and check out all of the great interviews they've done all season with all the top prep hockey teams in the area. There's a bunch of interviews from uh, 
the uh, coaching staff and players for both St. Rita and St. Vider. Those two teams will be meeting up once again at the United Center. Uh, this time, though, it will be on a much bigger stage for the state championship. And you can watch that game on Comcast Sportsnet. I believe it will be Judd Surratt and Steve Conroy on the call for the uh, Red Varsity High School Championship. Once again, that game will be on March 23rd. So uh, thanks for joining us. St. St. Vider wins it 4-2. They'll be playing St. Rita for the state championship game. I'm Matt Mish, and you've been watching High School Hockey on HighSchoolCube.com.